Happy Sunday everybody! So welcome back, thank you so much for tuning in as always and if you're new to this channel a big massive welcome to you, thank you so so much for taking your time out to come and watch this. I know some of you are starting university in September and I promised you that I would do you a what to prepare before you start university vlog. I'm going to do a checklist as well possibly as well as what you should be doing to prepare just to help you get settled in and I hope that this really really helps you. So firstly a common question I get asked is what should I revise, what should I be looking up, what should I be learning before I start university. Firstly chill, relax, it's okay. If you don't want to do anything before you start, you don't have to do anything. If you don't want to look anything up, that's fine. I went into university with fresh pair of eyes. I hadn't done the access course for five years. I did a little bit of research, but not a lot, to be honest, before I started university. And you do sort of get thrown into it and you do get to know physiology. And the more you revise, the more you learn when you're on the degree, the more knowledge you gain from it. But I didn't revise anything before starting. I didn't do anything, barely. I didn't read any books. And the easiest option is just don't worry about it. And I know that's really easy for me to say, but it is, it's no biggie if you don't revise or anything before you start uni, because everything you need to know, you will learn as you go. But I know you want to revise, so, the best place to go for me, this is just my own personal opinion, is the Khan Academy. I've said this before, I share it on my social media. I love the Khan Academy. They haven't paid me to say this, I promise. It's not a sponsor, it's not a shout out, anything like that. But they've helped me so, so much. Their videos on YouTube, their website with their quizzes and everything on is amazing. I absolutely adore it. And it saved my life with physiology, to be honest, throughout the whole three years. It's really helped me understand everything I need to know for physiology. It's just an easy way to explain physiology because they do diagrams and they draw it out and you, you sort of visualize it and it really really does help you remember so if you haven't already i know a lot of you have go and check that out but everybody learns different so if you don't want to watch a youtube video and do quizzes online if you want a physical book to look at and read from make notes and things like that in then the main one that most students get is the ross and wilson ones i'll put some links below and they're the main physiology books that a lot of students get and absolutely love. And they are good books. They're amazing books. Please don't buy full price. Go on eBay, go on Amazon, go on the Facebook groups and see if anyone's given anyway freebies or really, really cheap bargains before you buy full price because they are really, really pricey. They can go up to like £40, I think. So please save your money or ask someone to get you it as a gift, hint, hint birthdays coming up or anything like that. For me, I'm not a book person. I've got books, but I haven't read them. I've purely used online, internet, diagrams, all of that. So don't worry if you don't buy a book. Now, once you've found your source, YouTube videos, online websites, quizzes, a book, if you've bought a book, you're gonna to want to know what sort of things to revise because there's so much out there. So for us, I can only talk, disclaimer, sorry, disclaimer. I can only talk for my own experience, my own university, Birmingham City University. I'm not sure what other universities do, but our first year is all about getting to know the body systems. So my advice is get to know the body systems, the cardiovascular system, the renal system, the respiratory system, the endocrine system, the central nervous system, all of that, just the main body systems, get to know the areas, what they do, how they work together, how they link together. And um, if you can have a look at diagrams as well, diagram of the heart, know the chambers, that would be a massive bonus. The lungs, know what the bronchiole is, know what an alve alveoli is. But yeah, just get the basic overall body system and how it works, how it functions and what each one does, and you'll be well away. And as well as the physiology stuff, you're going to want to do assignment stuff. So if you're not familiar with Harvard referencing and your university uses Harvard referencing, have a look at that. Get your head around Harvard referencing and how to do it for your assignments. Um, another thing to look up is what I, abs this is something I absolutely loved, is the Manchester Phrase Bank. It's linking words, basically, that just links all of your things. So instead of saying, and then this, and then this, it's like following on from this. However, moreover, nonetheless, all these really nice words that help your assignment just flow nicely and link together. And it's my favourite thing, I think, with assignments is that. But I'll put all the links below anyway, so have a look at the details below because I'll put all the links for this below and you can have a look at that. 
I'm sure you've heard this many, many times. The NMC code is your Bible. So make sure you know the NMC code, look it up, save it, print it. That is literally our Bible. We must abide by the NMC code of conduct to practice as nurses, even as a student. So that's it, look that up and know it. Another one is the BNF. I have said this many times. This is your second Bible. This is the main book or app that you need, you absolutely need above everything else because medications, you're gonna to need to know it. You're gonna be administering them. You're gonna to need to know side effects, contraindications, all of that because sometimes somebody gets it wrong, prescribes it and you're administering it to say it's safe to give and sometimes it's not safe. And so you need to know your medications inside out because you can be part liable for that if something goes wrong. So know your medications. If you want a physical book, you can get a BNF free from the pharmacy. Please don't buy it. Please do not pay another student for their BNF. I saw a post on Twitter, I think this morning or yesterday, don't even know what day it is. I think it was yesterday actually, that someone had seen that a student was selling their BNF. Fair enough if that person's bought the BNF and then they're selling it on to get their money back, fair enough. But you can actually get a BNF free from the local pharmacy just search all the pharmacies, go in, tell them you're a student nurse. It will save you 50 quid. Tell them you're a student nurse and you want to know if they've got any spare BNFs that you can have for free and they will give you one if they've got them. But if they haven't got one, there is a free app as well. If you don't want to do that, there's a free app and it's so simple. It's amazing. I actually really love my app as well as my book. I just, I, I'm a bit of a weird one like that. I actually, it's the one book I do read and I do absolutely love is my BNF. They're also free and available on all of the wards for you to use, not to take home. Home. do not steal the BNF from the ward unless someone gives you the old one that's fine the there'll always be a BNF on the ward or area that you're working so don't worry too much about that I just like to have it at home and literally on my device so that it's everywhere with me so that I can look at it check it on it I can sit at home and revise my medications it's just it's amazing it is literally out of all of it, everything you need to remember that one and a couple of students have already shared that they've got their bnfs from the pharmacy so i'm really really sure that they've done that it's amazing so a little rundown of a checklist for you to tick off see if you've got it see if you've done it and if you have amazing if you haven't go do it be prepared go to uni prepared organized amazing love life have you had your occupational health checks and also i just want to just say please don't be paranoid about your occupational health checks it's just there for you to make sure you're up to date with all of your jabs please don't be scared if you've got any medical conditions basically they are there to make sure that you're safe and you're practice, practicing safely and to make sure that you've got enough support to make sure you get through this degree. So they'll put all the support in there. There's free counselling services at the universities, personal tutor, there's adaptions they can do at placement for you. All those sort of things that to just to put you in the right direction and get you the right sort of support. It's not to throw you off the course or prevent you from starting the course at all. So please, please, please rest your mind. It's gonna be okay, it's fine. It's just an overall check and health and wellbeing sort of check. So don't worry. Have you completed your DBS? Have you had it back? Is it all alright? Is it there? Because you need this before you go on to placement. So make sure it's done and you've got it back. Or it might go straight to your university. It might not necessarily come straight back to you, but just make sure that that's been received by somebody and it's been done and it's all okay. I'm sure they'll tell you anyway, if there's any sort of issues or problems or if it hadn't come back in time, they will be on it. Don't worry, don't worry. And just check that you've been given your actual start date and time, place where you should be, what room number, all of that. Make sure you know it. If you haven't received anything and you've been left in the lurch, you don't know what day you're starting, what time, anything, please give the school office a ring because this happened to me and I didn't know and I actually missed my induction because nobody told me when to start or anything. I was just waiting. I was like, I'm sure I'm supposed to be starting uni right now. So I rang them up and then they're like, yeah, actually it was last week. So I missed whole week of introductions and all of that jazz because of that so please sometimes there are technical issues sometimes you don't receive the email or anything like that so please ring them and just check and just have a little polite lovely conversation and gentle reminder for them to send you something and let you know have you got your stationery the most important 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 big capital i of all your stationery get your pens get your colors get your 
rulers, rubbers, pencils, get your paper, get your folders, get your poly pockets, everything and anything because we love stationery, or I do. I'm really sorry if you don't love stationery, don't worry about it. If you don't, just get a big pen and paper, don't worry about it. Have you got some comfy shoes for when you start your placement? So these need to be all black, leather, completely covered. Make sure they meet the criteria of your university. They will tell you this anyway. If you have a look online, a lot of people get sketches. A lot of people get the clocks unlooped. I've got the clocks unlooped, which are amazing. But you're gonna be walking around for 12 and a half hours on your feet, 24 seven, pretty much on these placements. You're gonna be rushed off your feet. You're gonna be constant. Your feet are gonna ache, they're gonna burn. Some people have mentioned that their feet swell up as well. So you're gonna want really, really comfy shoes. I've also heard some people say that if your feet do swell and you're really struggling with aching feet and ankles and calves, then some people have bought compression stockings and they've actually worn them on placement and apparently it really helps and it really works. Don't quote me on that because I haven't tried it. I don't know. I haven't got a clue what the research is behind it, but it's helped a lot of students out there by the sound of it. So try it, it give it a go. If it does work, amazing. If it doesn't work, I'm sorry. It's just a little tip that I've seen out there that will hopefully work for you. Have you got your fob watch? Of course, you need a fob watch. You need to have your fob watch so that you can count the respiratory rate and the pulse when you do your observations on your patient. It's the best thing ever. I, oh, when you don't have a fob watch, it's a nightmare. You really, really struggle. So please get a fob watch. They're really cheap. You can buy them cheap on Amazon. Um, a lot of people lately have been asking about stethoscopes and I think it's because people post their stethoscopes because they, they look nice. Let's face it, we all love a good stethoscope and anything medical related now that we're student nurses. But actually, the only time I've ever used my manual blood pressure set slash proper nice stethoscope is in my general practice placement because they do a lot more manual blood pressures which I love. I will always opt for manual blood pressure over the electronic machine because I trust it a lot more. It's a lot more accurate. Also, top tip, if you've got a patient with atrial fibrillation or AF, then you have to do a manual blood pressure on them rather than electronic because the electronic one will not pick it up. It will not be accurate and you will be writing down the observations completely wrong. So please do a manual set of observations on them. But I know this doesn't happen across the board and not everybody does this. But just you, it's good practice, it's there, it's in the NICE guidelines, we have to be following that. So please ask somebody, if you haven't got one, ask somebody to use it. But apart from my GP practice, I have never used my stethoscope, my actual own stethoscope. So just weigh it up. Do you really need it? I'm not 100% certain that you do need your own stethoscope, but it is nice to have. It's a nice gift. It looks pretty. Realistically, how often are you going to use it? Not that often, unless you are working in general practice. I know children's nurses use them a lot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen a few children's nurses with stethoscopes that they have used. So yeah, but in adult field, as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen anyone, unless you're in the community, use a proper stethoscope that's their own. But on the other side of that, if you do need a stethoscope, there will be one in the area that you're working in. So you don't have to worry about forking out for your own stethoscope. I've talked way too much about stethoscopes, I'm sorry. But I, if you don't need to buy it, don't buy it is the easy answer. Don't waste your money, don't spend your money. Again, if you want to put it on the gift list as a Christmas present or a birthday present or something, it's a nice gift. I got mine as a birthday present and I was absolutely chuffed with mine. So yeah. But I know for our first year OSCE as well, we had to do a set of manual observations as our OSCE. So I personally bought my own manual blood pressure set. It was literally a few pounds from Amazon. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't a proper fancy one or anything. I think it was in the sale for 5 99 or something. I got that and I used that to practice at home on everybody and anybody that could do it. And I also really love to have it at home so I can check people's blood pressure because I'm obsessed apparently with blood pressure. But I love doing that, it's amazing. But I did that to practice from home so I didn't have to keep going to uni to borrow the equipment at uni to practice. I could just do it from home and that just really, really helped me. So in that sense, it is a really big help. When you first start university, 
please find the timetable online, find the three year planner, download it, print it, laminate it, put it on your wall so you know when you're on placement, when you're at university, when your annual leave is, when your exams are, just keep it and have it because it's so, so handy and it's amazing. Also download your assessment scheduler. So our university has an assessment scheduler. It'll tell you when the exams are, it'll tell you when the retakes are and when you should be getting your results back as well. They are the best things that I've ever downloaded. I love them and I love to know where I am, what to expect and what I've accomplished so far. And it's nice to tick them off. Also get yourself a diary. If you are a diary person and a planner person, it's really good to have that so that you know where you are, what room you're in, what time you're in. Extracurricular activities can go into it as well, just to keep yourself more organized. Give yourself deadlines as well. So when you're gonna do things by, plan it all. Keep yourself really, really organized and you're gonna be amazing. And just on a last note, I just wanted to give a couple of tips for when you start university. So first things first, if you're going into university alone, you don't know anybody, smile, make friends, be happy, love life, don't panic too much, hopefully like I did. Don't be scared to speak to people, make friends, say hello, sit next to people, look out for other people that are alone as well, buddy up, get together, it'll be amazing, don't worry. If you are in a group of friends who are starting uni together, look out for those lonely people that are sitting on their own quite a lot, walking around a lot, say hello, make friends, invite them into your group so that they've got someone to have fun with and have a great time with because this course is going to be hard you're going to need that moral support from your friends you're going to need that mutual understanding of how hard nursing is and how stressful exams can be to support each other and guide each other through it and motivate each other and um, inspire each other so just make a friend because it is really the key to staying successful at university and my next tip is just get yourself organised, like I've said about the calendars, diaries, the organisers, the planners, timetables, just keep organised, stay on top of things. When they launch something, look at it, start it, rather than leaving it to last minute, and just you, you'll be well away if you can do that. Please make use of the library, any sort of support services that they have, any skill sessions, anything like that, any sort of skills space areas that they have at university for you to practice your skills. Go and make use of all of those things. Your personal tutor, if there's a mental health services or counselling and you need it, go to those, have a look. Just get as much support as you can because it's free and it's university. We are only there for three years. So make the most of everything that you can and all of that support that you can while you can. Don't feel too shy or too proud to ask for help. Please get the help. Everyone wants you to pass the course. They don't want you to fail so they want that support in there to help you get through it. So please take it up, use it, abuse it, love it. And my very very final, I promise, final final tip is just stop. Pause the video, 10 seconds, five minutes, however long you need, stop, close your eyes, take a deep breath, relax the shoulders, deep breath out, relax. It's going to be okay. Stop worrying, stop stressing. This is going to be the best journey of your life. It's going to be amazing. You're going to meet new friends. You're going to love life. Yeah, it's going to be stressful sometimes, but that's when you take that moment to pause, stop, take some time out for yourself, recharge, re-energize and get back to it. You're going to be all right. So that is it, everybody. Good luck. Um, massive. I absolutely love following all of your Instagram posts. I love seeing all of your conditional offers and your excitement for September. Oh, it makes my day. It really, really does. And I, anything I see, I will like, I will comment on it. If I haven't liked or comment on your post, comment below because I want to see it. And I've obviously missed it because Instagram's a bit ooh, weird sometimes. But um, yeah, so it's goodbye for now. Good luck. You're going to be amazing. You've got this. Come on. Mm -hmm.